words in English, especially many of our sophisticated words, but how did these Latin-influenced words come about? It was mostly due to the spread of Latin through Christianity and the language's revival during the Renaissance. To fully understand the implementation of Latin into English, we need to take a closer look at the history of Christianity in Britain and how the language of Latin was spread throughout. The spread of Christianity in England was a gradual process that took many years. To further understand the spread of Christianity, we have to first start with a brief history of England. In the first century AD, Britain mostly followed polytheistic practices with a mix of British and Roman pagan gods. Christianity had originally entered Britain from the east through Roman artisans and traders. These artisans and traders told stories to the people of Britain about Jesus, and they also told stories about some of their pagan gods. Unfortunately, Christians ended up being persecuted because of their faith, and followers of the religion had to practice in private. Christianity was ade eventually adopted by the Roman Emperor Constantine, who made rules for the toler tolerance of Christianity in 313 AD. Christianity had originally become more visible and prominent in Britain during the 4th century, but paganism was still what most people practiced. Soon after, there were invasions by Angles, Saxons, and Jews. Christianity ended up getting pushed to the western edges of Britain. Of Britain. The Anglo-Saxons ended up conquering Britain in the 400s. Britain ended up getting divided into a heptarchy, or seven kingdoms. In 597, Christianity ended up bringing Latin vocabulary to Britain. When Christianity spread to the British Isles, churches and monasteries were built. Monks who worked in the monasteries were educated individuals who had script and literature. They taught poetry, astronomy, and arithmetic. They had a strong focus on the abstract expression in language, and they brought more sophisticated and philosophical words. The monks even brought religious words from and ideas from India and China, and they encouraged Anglo-Saxons to use words for new meanings in order to express larger and more complex thoughts. A couple centuries later, in the 700s, the Anglo-Saxons had been converted to Catholic Christianity. England's conversion to Christianity was a gradual and peaceful process without any martyrs. Then, in the 9th century, the Vikings attacked and conquered six out of the seven kingdoms in the British Heptarchy. These Viking attacks started to destroy the Christian Church, of Eng church of Eng in England. The only kingdom that wasn't conquered was called Wessex. The king of Wessex was a Christian named Alfred the Great, who reigned from 871 to 899, and he was the main reason why Wessex was able to survive when the rest of the, the other kingdoms didn't. Alfred was technically the savior of Christianity. He instituted many strategies to keep his kingdom protected. First off, he kept a standing army at all times, with half of his soldiers on guard and, and, ha and the rest of them watching over and maintaining the crops. He also kept a navy and established fortified centers called burrs. Alfred and his successors took an offensive and were able to take back a good part of England. All of the seven previous kingdoms had been wiped out, so now a much larger and unified kingdom was established. A much stronger state ended up being established in Britain than, was, than that was originally present. It's arguable that the Viking in, invasions may have been beneficial for the Anglo-Saxons. Otherwise, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have had such, as strong of a state as they did after the Viking invasions. The Viking invasions of the 9th century brought lots of Germanic influences to the British Isles, particularly in language. Since there are large Latin influences of early Germanic languages, Old English had Latin influence through this. You can see these influences in words about trade and war in particular, such as pound, meaning pound, from the Latin pondo, and straet, meaning road, from the Latin strata. There are also Latin influences in domestic words and foods, like cupa, meaning cup, from the Latin cuppa, and cis, meaning cheese, from the Latin casus. However, up until Christianity was brought to the British Isles, there was no direct in Latin influence on English. The Norman conquest during the 11th century brought French and Latin root words to English. Since the Normans were upper class after taking control, many words in English with French and Latin roots are considered more formal or used by the upper class as they would have during this time. As Christianity spread across the British Isles, churches and monasteries were built. Monks teaching in the monasteries focused particularly on religious literature. Many of these teachings were in Latin, as the Catholic scriptures were at the time. Clearly, we know now that one of Latin's largest influences on English was in religion. For example, take the word angel. Its original Greek is angelus, meaning messenger. 
The Latin is Angelus. From there, the Old German changed to Angel. However, it changed slightly in Old English to Angel. Angel later lost the E due to French and Latin influences to bring us to the modern angel. Another example is the word priest. The term in Latin is presbyter, which means elder. The idea is that the priest is the respected elder leading the church. The Old Germanic was priester, and it moved on to Old English, and the term became priost. Although the term has similar usage now, the term in Old English was more generic, applying to any minister or religious leader. Eventually, the modern-day usage of priest was influenced by the rules of the Catholic Church. Over time, several cultures came to the British Islands in conquest. The invaders' cultures mixed with the islanders over time, bringing in new words and languages. These invasions of the island happened over time, and new generations of people eventually had a language that was a mixture of all of these different languages. This language is called English. One of the major languages affecting English is Latin. Latin was one of the uh, first foreign languages to come to the islands. It came with the Romans when they gained control of the islands. However, at this point, English was very early on in its lifespan and did not take in very many words from Latin. Later on, England was under the control of the French, which is a daughter of language. <laughs> However, the biggest influence Latin had on English was the Renaissance. Due to several factors occurring during the Renaissance, many elements of the Latin language developed into English. Firstly, ancient, and, ancient Roman and Greek cities and constructs were being discovered. Greek and Roman culture was becoming more and more popular, and as it was so easy to access, it held lots of influence. Architecture, art, politics, and science were only some of the things that were being influenced by these past cultures. Due to the invention of the printing press, many more people could afford books and an education. This had many influences on English and the scholarly culture at the time, as most of the lower and middle classes, who are now able to afford books, spoke English. Many books began to be printed in English. This led to the increasing development and popularity of the language. Over time, English became so popular that universities, who in the past had used Latin and Greek, started using English. However, they ran into a problem while translating Latin writings to English. Some Latin words had no English equivalent. The translators would simply leave the Latin word alone. As a result, English scholars would have to learn a bit of English to read the translated books. Over time, the untranslatable Latin words were considered part of English. English was also affected by literature. Many writings around the 1500s began to coin words and phrases which were fancy and somewhat unnecessary. Many writers repeatedly used these terms, called inkhorn words. Others thought that these inkhorn words were redundant and, un un and unnecessary. These words often had Latin roots, and once they became part of the language, they tended to be accepted. Overall, the Renaissance was a very important time for English and Latin. One language grew more dominant and overpowered the other, but the other language never really goes away. This time period shows how languages can change and gain vocabulary.